This picture shows the planet Earth with a man, standing on its surface, helplessly looking at the greenhouse gases causing climate changes. However, he should look towards the Earth upon which he is standing. Every day he makes it more compact and drains it more and more. The dehydrated surface is drained and heated by the sun, which leads to warming of the Earth's atmosphere, and the final consequence can be catastrophic. The long-standing experience I have in the field of the construction of forest roads, flood dams along the rivers, and timber logging roads made me realize that the compressed soil on the slopes is one of the main reasons for floods, droughts, the drying of watercourses, the drying of forest areas, and the lowering of groundwater levels. Compressed soil is one of the major causes of climate change. Compressed surfaces are what is left after the operation of heavy machinery in undisturbed forest areas, mainly during timber logging. One forest tractor used to pull timber is able to compress three kilometers of soil per day, or in other words, compresses some 10,000 square meters of soil. This is an area as big as two football pitches on a hill. The rainwater that falls here immediately runs off to the valley and gradually drains the forest. Many compressed soil areas can be seen at the logging tracks, being a result of timber carrying vehicles and the tracks they leave all the way from the place of excavation to the warehouses. These roads are built on the slopes with a maximum 10% ascent. Between the artificially created slope and the road, a side ditch is usually wedged in too. Both the road and the ditch drain the forest by allowing rainwater and water from melting snow to flow rapidly down to the valley below. After entering the forest, the roads are branching into more logging tracks and forest roads, so the compressed areas spread like a disease. Every day, hundreds and even thousands of kilometers of compressed surfaces are created in an uncontrollable manner all around our planet, and mainly in the forests. Compressed soil is no longer able to retain rainwaters and water from melting snow. Instead, these waters flow quickly into the lowlands. At the foot of the hills, these logging roads merge and great volumes of water, flowing down the compressed surfaces, run into the watercourses. The more compressed surfaces on the slopes and abandoned forest roads we have, the greater the volumes of water leaving the forests, the higher its speed, and the more fertile soil and sediments are taken to the valleys. When the water is gone, a catastrophe remains behind. That's not all, however. The increased amount of compressed soil results in draining of hills, removal of fertile soil from the slopes, subsequent floods, overheating of the land due to lack of water, resulting in warming of the atmosphere. This is climate change. However, I have never seen the water stream down the slope, through the grass, or down a glade where there were no ruts after the logging. This means that the water is retained here, being absorbed by the soil at the spot where it falls, finding its way down to the roots of plants, water sources, and groundwater. After realizing this, I began to follow the hydrological cycle even more closely. I tried to find as much information on the causes of floods and global warming as possible. It seems the causes were always the same. Greenhouse gases and tree felling. Though I have never come across any source listing compressed soil on the slopes and logging tracks, left behind after human activities in the forests, and even if these roads are out of use, as one of the main causes of floods and droughts. For several years now, I have been monitoring the situation in the Carpathian Mountains in the Ukraine and in Slovakia. I have been visiting all places in Slovakia affected by floods or landslides. I have also walked parts of the Polish mountain ranges and Jizerske Hory Mountains in the Czech Republic. This year, I have also visited the city of Genova in Italy, which was flooded in November 2011. Again, I have found out that the floods were mainly caused by the compressed surfaces on the slopes, which enabled the fast runoff of rainwater into the city. 
Documentaries on the logging practices in Romania and Brazilian rainforests showed that the forest soil is not handled with kids' gloves there as well. The rainwater has more and more opportunities to run off along these compressed surfaces, eroding deeper and deeper. Even two days after rain, you can still see clear water running down a forest road. At some locations, such clear water can run down the roads even weeks after the rain. It is the rainwater which has got into the uncompressed forest earth, some 50 plus meters above the forest road. This picture shows the rainwater being absorbed by the earth, and under the surface, finding its way to the roots of trees, plants, and groundwater. Yet people have cut off the minute channels water has used for years, just above the forest road, the logging track, or the eroded soil on the slope, bringing it back to the compressed soil surface. Man slits the veins of the earth he lives on. This picture, taken in December 2011, reveals a great number of cut-off channels on the man-made slope at the bottom of the hill. Through these channels, water used to get to the groundwater. The marked channels are 9 meters deep under the surface, and they are approximately 20 millimeters in diameter. Through them, the water is discharged to the compressed surface and then to the ditch. Thus, it ends up in channels and rivers without a chance to offer its life-giving power to the forest. What was the distance the rainwater had to travel to end up 9 meters below the surface? How big is the forest area these artificial slopes drain? In March 2012, I realized that the water from melting snow at the very same slope runs from the cutoff channels, flowing from land to oceans. It does not have the chance to become groundwater. Every day, billions of such cutoff channels appear on the newly created slopes above compressed or hardened surfaces. And it is through them we drain the lands of our planet. We could have seen many of such occurrences this spring. Instead of retaining the water naturally in the countryside, we make it easier for the water to be discharged into the oceans. At the same time, with water we are also losing fertile soil, which in the form of mud is transported outside of the forest. To some extent, this soil remains in the dams and reservoirs, and the rest ends in the oceans. For our life on Earth, water and soil are the two most important things. We can already feel the lack of water. I started to focus on the topic of floods and droughts in 2009. Since then, I have found a staggering number of dried out streams in Slovakia. My experience clearly shows that these watercourses dried out because of the compressed soil on the slopes in mountains, forests, mountain meadows and fields. See for yourselves. In October, using GPS, I documented the old and new forest roads and the compressed surfaces. These blue lines, that was a stream only last year. This year, it remained empty due to these compressed areas marked in yellow, which had prevented the rainwater soaking into the ground, to nurture the forest and to fill the springs and underground waters. The sun will dry this drained area even more. The land will then overheat together with the Earth's atmosphere. There are 19 kilometers of compressed roads within the area of 110 hectares. Logging continues. Compressed soil makes up for more than 7% of the total area. The healthy part of the forest thus has no chance to survive, as forest roads and compressed surfaces on the slopes drain it completely and the forest will start to dry out. There is a similar problem in river catchment basins. The blue curve in this graph shows the measured levels of the river Uch dropping from the year 1956 to 2011 in millimeters. The red curve stands for increases of compressed surfaces, of forest roads, on slopes. The curve has a rising tendency. We can definitely say that the volume of compressed earth in our forests is growing with enormous speed, and that the main reason is that the unused roads are not reconditioned, returning them to nature. Both of the curves remind us of the scissors which open more evenly every day. 
If we don't stop this as soon as possible, there is a threat of drainage, of drying out, and consequently, the overheating of the land in which we live. And yet the solution is simple. We need to start eliminating the compressed surfaces in our forests as soon as possible. Some sources believe that the reason for groundwater depletion is more intense water evaporation. My experience has convinced me that the main reason is a greater rainwater runoff via the compressed road surfaces in forests and via paved or concrete surfaces in towns and villages. The uncontrolled increase of compressed surfaces on the slopes causes a catastrophe. Rainwater, which flows down the compressed surfaces, floods villages and towns, takes away fertile soil from forests, and causes massive landslides. I offer a solution to stop this tendency, and at the same time, to keep the necessary forest roads needed for economic activities. In my efforts to put an end to the drying out of the forests, as well as demonstrating that the compressed roads in these forests are causing problems, I decided to transform all of my experience into particular flood protection projects. I realized these in two different locations in eastern Slovakia. The first of them was implemented in March 2011 in the municipality of Tjahanovce. Tjahanovce used to be flooded by the surrounding hills. After logging, the water used to run down the old forest roads into the valleys flooding houses. We reconditioned these old roads, stopping the water flow on them in order to retain the rainwater immediately in the place where it fell, by allowing it to soak naturally into the dug earth. The result was instant. The rainwater stayed in these newly dug areas. At some places, the water remained in the small ruts for a longer time, soaking down into the earth gradually. This means that it created channels for subsurface runoff and gradually got to the springs and down into the groundwater. Before the modification, the stream used to flood the village during the rains and dry out during drought periods. In autumn 2011, which was very dry, the stream was full, filled by the rainwater which was previously retained in the forest during spring and summer rains. Down in the valley, we built three water-retaining earthen dams, which created lakes. They serve as control reservoirs. Today, when it rains, the water level rises only by several centimeters. Since the modifications were finished, water does not flood the municipality any longer. The reconditioned roads retain all the rainwater and do not drain the surrounding forest. Because the water flows into the lake slowly, and at the same time, it also fills the groundwater. Seven months after completing the works, the reconditioned roads were overgrown by plants and gradually melted into the surrounding countryside. The only visible trace left after flood protection measures are the lakes, which attract people, birds, and animals. The ability of Tjahanovce forests to retain water effectively after these modifications was subject to measurements by the Slovak Academy of Sciences. An experiment was performed on a compressed, eroded road, which used to be a logging road. The scientists simulated rain with an intensity of 100 millimeters per square meter in three hours. Whereas the compressed road absorbed almost no water, the road which was dug up was capable of retaining 100% of the water. In June 2011, a five meter high flood wave hit the municipality of Pila. The very same team of scientists has concluded that the wave could have been as much as 50% lower if there were no compressed surfaces located in the mountains above the municipality. In the municipality of Repeov, we built a complex of water-retaining, eye-pleasing constructions. There are six lakes in total. Another four lakes form a cascade, which serve to control the water levels. When vegetation grows up around the lakes, the landscape can be used for rest and recreation. However, such measures must be implemented hand-in-hand -hand with modifications to forest roads. After mapping the roads in the hills above the lakes, we then reconditioned all compressed areas and forest logging roads which were no longer in use. The machinery doing this proceeded from the highest place in the forest to the foot of the mountain. By proceeding from the highest point in the mountain down to the valley, 
we allowed the rainwater to soak into the earth immediately, so it had no chance to gain momentum, which makes it dangerous, of course. We reconditioned and modified more than 14 kilometers of forest roads in seven days. When the snow melted in March 2012, the water soaked into the forest ground instead of flowing off along the non-reconditioned logging track into the valley. As you can see here, the water used to carry away fertile soil and sediment through the tracks created by the tractor's logging timber. Where the roads were reconditioned by excavators, the water stayed in the dug-up holes and gradually soaked into the earth. This means that the proposed measure is effective immediately keeping the rainwater where it fell, even in the form of snow. Then it soaks into the earth, feeding the plants, water sources, and groundwater. Both of the flood protection projects which I have presented to you are immediately effective and the costs for their realization are incomparable with building expensive dams. You can compare it yourselves. In the past, we raised a dike along the river Uch by approximately 1.3 meters for a length of 4.5 kilometers. Nine machines were working on it for three months. The overall costs climbed to an amount higher than 800,000 euros. Today, this dike towers over the empty river, waiting for storm rainfall to come from the mountains via the compressed forest roads and logging tracks and bringing with it heaps of rocks and gravel, as well as fertile soil without which life in the mountains cannot exist. There are hundreds of kilometers of such dikes along the banks of our rivers. For comparison, with the same number of machines and within the same time span, we could recondition up to 800 kilometers of compressed 5 meter wide forest roads. This represents 4 square kilometers of area. With an annual rainfall of 700 millimeters, this area would retain 2.8 million cubic meters of rainwater falling in the area. Such an amount of water could be pictured as a 560 meter high column of water the size of a football pitch. Such an area, however, is able to retain also the water drained from the forest area above it. Thus, according to my calculations, the volume of water retained within this area would increase two to five times. All of this for the same price. The water, which would be retained in the forest, would therefore not flow at jet speed into the valleys and so cause a catastrophe. But this is not all. When retained in the forest, water gradually soaks into the ground naturally and then flows into the river sources and groundwater. Water is life. Therefore, the forests would revive. The animals would have enough drinking sources. The lives of plants would intensify. I am convinced that this is the only way to stop forever the unwanted drainage of rainwater and the erosion of fertile soil from the forests and from the country. It is the only way how to get the rainwater back to the roots of the plants and into the groundwater. And at the same time, it is the only way to prevent the forests from drying out. Climatologists talk about global warming which affects the amount of rainfall. And then they warn that this type of weather and storm rainfall will occur more frequently and that we have to get ready for it. What does this mean for us? Regulating, paving, and concreting streams in villages and towns where there is hardly any water or none at all. Building higher and higher dams, awaiting storm rainfall. Building huge storm lakes, which the storm water will soon fill with sediments anyway building meaningless flood protection structures only for the sake of doing something? Or do we helplessly look up at greenhouse gases, for it is they who are responsible for the climate change? We all know that without these greenhouse gases, life on this planet would be impossible. In these times when we witness alternating flood and drought, it is necessary to look for the most natural of solutions. Such solutions would not only stop the floodwaters, but would also be capable of using this water for our benefit. 
benefit in the form of local evaporation and the subsequent rainfall, ensuring a sufficiency of water. Benefit in the form of lakes and beautiful scenery that this water would create naturally in the environment. This is a global issue. I have talked of this issue in November 2011 in the European Parliament, as well as during the 6th World Water Forum in Marseille. And today again, I am looking for players involved in the drafting of legislation, binding regulations and provisions, as we inevitably need such laws that would make the elimination of compressed surfaces, when they are no longer used, obligatory. At the same time, we need control mechanisms which would be able to enforce the law and to make the forest users abide by the law. Without a control mechanism, any law would be toothless. Just as we are able to control emissions, industry or great rivers, we can regulate the yet uncontrolled increase in the number of forest roads and compressed surface areas in the world. A well-tested technical solution exists. Therefore I appeal to you, help to retain the raindrops where they fall and let us help the earth to drink water. Let's start acting where it's the most important, in the mountains. At the time this documentary was being made, a friend of mine asked me whether I was sure about what I wanted to show in the film and whether or not I was afraid. My answer was, first of all, it is impossible to have doubts about something I see quite clearly. Secondly, I'm not the only one to see this. Already in 1976, Czech scientists published a study in which they talked about the negative influence forest roads have on the draining of forests. Later, two US scientists confirmed that such forest roads cause flood discharge levels to increase by one-third. The same was confirmed by the research project carried out last year by the Slovak Academy of Sciences, an expert team led by Dr. Orfanus. As for the question whether I was afraid, we all have to be afraid. As in the last decades, we have reached jet speed progress in eliminating the two most important things for our life on Earth, water and soil. <laughs>